What's up guys, welcome back to another video and another update on the Caddy. As you can see behind me, the engine's now out. In the last video, um, you saw the engine start up for the first time. I've taken it out because now I'm happy with the way, um, or with all the electrics, I'm happy with the way it starts, etc, etc. So I'm confident to now finish all the soldering on the loom, tape it up for the final time, and then hopefully, obviously, when it goes all back in, there'll be no issues. So what I've been doing in between then and now is I have fitted the brakes, which now 312 millimeter discs from a Mark IV Golf 4 Motion. Um, I have started doing some of the engine bay stuff. So I fitted a new battery tray. I've started to blank some of the holes that were there from the previous engine. So now I've got just these three, three holes for the loom. That needs to be blanked, that's for the um, uh, that holds the brake master cylinder. So two of these are for engine loom and one of them is for the um, engine compartment loom. I've finished the mounts for the steering rack. Um, they're tacked on at the moment, just need final welding. But what I'm gonna do is make sure that all the steering system is fine, all the angles are fine before I finally weld in all, all the mounts. But in essence, what I've had to do here is because where this was previously left-hand drive, the mounts were made for a left-hand drive rack. Now, this this rack, which is a Mark III Golf rack, wouldn't fit because this mounting point was that thick. So obviously it was hitting against this, so it wouldn't go in. Hence why I tried um, to use a Lupo um, stroke um, polo rack to try and get around that problem. That didn't work, so what I've had to do is, in essence, cut off the mounts and shorten it down somewhat and then just kind of just redo this mounting point which gives me the space to be able to put this back where it needs to be so that all lines up nicely all turns as as it should do um, i've welded in the well i've tack welded on the mounts for the steering column again i'll finish all that once i know it's all working as intended so what else has been done um i think that's it for the engine bay The other thing I've been doing is the um, pedal box. So the original plan was to use a bias pedal box, so to get rid of the servo and just use the master cylinders. Um, Chin my mind on that front, I'd like to use a servo. So I'm using the Mark One servo, which has that brake bar which goes across the bulkhead. Um, so I've had to buy a kit for the hydraulic clutch. So I got my kit from Richification, which is a guy called Al who also runs a caddy for him. And kind of this is part of the kit. It's a really simple kit to install. Um, if you just give me a second to put the camera down, I'll show you how it all kind of fits together. Right, I'm just going to start with the hydraulic clutch conversion kit. Um, the kit comes with a master cylinder, all the bracketry required, return spring, um, hose to go to the, uh, the reservoir, the reservoir itself some breaded um, line which goes from the master cylinder to the slave cylinder on the gearbox and all the fittings you need so it is literally a, a comprehensive comprehensive kit to get you going um, obviously this has all been done now I've welded everything in situ everything is working as intended but I guess I'll just show you now the process by which you go through to get it to get it all bolted on and welded on so take the clutch pedal off the only modification you need to do to this is there's a kind of little bracket which which sits off this this edge. That's got to be cut off so this pin can go through. The pin's got to be put in. Make sure the orientation of that pin's correct, and then it's rolled round to make sure that's in there firmly. Um, a hole needs to be drilled in this corner here, which is for the return spring, and then both of these two edges need to be kind of filed down to a, a thin lip, so um, it makes the spring easy to get in, and the spring won't catch on the edge. But other than that, that's it for this. Ignore this extra bracket I've bought on, I'll explain that after. Right, in terms of the assembly for the kind of column stroke pedal box, obviously you've got this bracket which you have to weld on. It comes with two bolts which you need to weld in. You can just see on the inside there they're now welded on. You might need to shave a little bit off that bolt to get this in square. But obviously once it's all welded up, it's all nice and firm, so there's no problems there. Um, so once you've welded the bolts into this bracket, you've, you've then got to fit your clutch pedal. 
make sure that this rubber bot this kind of rubber stop is on okay and you best well I guess the best thing to do is to cable tie this round so this um, pedal is tight up against this kind of rubber stop and that gives you your kind of M position or your fully extended position for the mask cylinder and all you have to do is obviously this is this bracket won't be welded in it will be loose but put your mask cylinder on and bolt it down and that should be wherever you position this bracket should be when it's in the fully extended position and the pedal is up against that rubber stop and in essence where you have when you have it where you want and it's not twisted it's kind of square and straight that's obviously the point you need to weld it so I guess the way I did it was I was tacked it in four corners so I had it where I wanted it and then I took obviously all the bits and pieces off to give it the final weld so you don't heat this mask cylinder up when you're trying to weld it um, and that's kind of it so it's, again it's really simple so obviously you can see here there's the motion and if I show you the return spring that simply goes there's a little cut out on the bottom of that bracket for the return spring and there you have it really simple really effective doesn't take long at all to do so I was going to try and reuse the original Mark III um, mask cylinder I cut it into the bulkhead but in the end I thought I mean, this is a proved, proven a proven way of doing things and it's just a lot easier so I'm glad I went this route rather than faffing around and cut holes in bulkheads and stuff so it works for me Right, anyway, to answer, I guess, the potential question, what's this extra piece of angle that I've welded onto the pedal? Well, um, I've decided to reuse the Mark IV uh, clutch pedal position sensor and brake switch. So I have welded on this section here, which takes the clutch pedal switch that fits in there like so and then I have reused let me move these bits out of the way reused the factory um, brake switch off a Mark 1 Golf um, now the end of this is shorter than a, a, a Mark 1 switch would be but obviously the, the, the mounting points are still the same so what I've done is just kind of extended the pedal back a little bit show you that let's see if I get the pedal on so I've welded this little section onto the brake pedal so now when it's against the stop it pressures the brake pedal so it pressures the brake switch so I've been able to reuse all the wiring for the Mark IV um, and it's kind of made that whole process a bit simpler so in essence I've now got a Mark I pedal box which has a hydraulic clutch and brake and clutch switch and in terms of the accelerator pedal, which is this, so it's obviously it's drive by wire throttle body on the V64 motion. I have reused this section, which is um, from the Mark IV pedal box. Um, obviously, I've ground it away and kind of reshaped it so it follows the contours of the Mark I um, uh, inner arch. And then I've welded this section on here, which basically spaces the pedal out. And allows me to move it slightly further to the right because obviously I want the correct spacing um, in terms of the ped pedals so I didn't want it obviously clearly too close to the brake and I didn't want it um, too I guess low down so obviously I want all the pedals to be at the same level so obviously when you lift off the accelerator you can quickly just step over to the brake rather than having to lift your foot too high so this spacer, this basically metal spacer has allowed me to come up, which gives it the right level and allowed me some space to go across, which means I've got a nice distance between the accelerator pedal and the brake pedal. And then all I did is I bolted the bolt in here. So this just literally bolts with the bulkhead, allows me to bolt it on. Then what I will do when it's all said and done and in situ, I will basically come off this section here and make some brackets to go, to go across to this just to give it some strength but obviously I'm not going to rely on that bolt on the bulkhead to hold this in firmly so I'll brace it off the pedal box and that's it so 
I've now got Mark IV accelerator pedal, Mark IV switches, and a hydraulic clutch. So that's all good. Right, I guess that's kind of it for this video. Um, in terms of what next, the engine which has just sat on this band here needs to go back in. And the reason why it needs to go back in, which it won't be the final time it goes back in, is because I need to do a few tweaks to the engine downpipe. Um, I need to fit the shifter cables and make sure the lengths are okay um, to, the, to the battery because the engine, um, the battery position is slightly further forward. So we need to double check and make sure um, it all fits. And whilst the engine's in, I will um, make the drive shafts to make sure the suspension's the right level and then make the drive shafts. Those will just be temporary drive shafts just to kind of get the lengths and make sure I can move it around. Then I'll get a set custom made um, based of those templates. Then the engine comes back out again and I'll finish all the holes in the bulkhead um, grind the welds back, prime, um, obviously, obviously fill where necessary, and then the engine base should be complete. Once that's done, the engine can go back in. Hopefully at that point, the drive shaft will arrive, and that will kind of be it for the engine. Then it's just finishing off some of the mounts for the dashboard and um, fitness stereo, etc., etc. Then just neatening up some of the fuel lines, and we should be good. So again, a reasonable amount of progress made. Still a bit more to do, but we're getting there. But yeah, anyway, that's it for this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I will catch you back on the next update. Cheers, bye.